everybody welcome back to the channel let's talk about sleep uh dr daniel barone um <clears throat> i wanted to talk today about an uh, interesting phenomenon known as sleep paralysis so one of my uh one of my viewers had mentioned that he has narcolepsy and sleep paralysis so i thought that would be a good thing to uh to address today so as you might expect, narcolepsy oftentimes can have sleep paralysis. People with narcolepsy will oftentimes have sleep paralysis as part of the condition. You can watch my my video uh, about narcolepsy uh, to get more, more information on that. But sleep paralysis doesn't actually only just occur in narcolepsy. It actually happens in other things as well. So let's talk about it. First of all, what is it, right? So just what it sounds like. People who have sleep paralysis um, and... By the way, if it happens once, you know, once or twice every several years, it's not a big deal. I've had it myself. Um, but people who, who have had it will all tell you it's this very eerie sensation of waking up and being unable to move. So, you know, sleep paralysis, right? Uh, what happens is these people will find that they wake up out of a dream or just wake up abruptly and if it's almost like they're locked in and they have to kind of like fight or scream to, to, to get out of it. Now, people with narcolepsy have this, have this frequently. And like I said, that can be in the context of dreams. So what happens is people will have these dreams where they're getting attacked or there's a, a friend of mine told me this story. He has this dream where it's kind of like a, a shadow was in the corner of the room coming at him in the shape of a demon and he can't move, you know. So what's going on here is uh, we have to talk about about the uh, the various stages of sleep the brain goes into when we fall asleep. One of them is called REM, rapid eye movement sleep. And <clears throat> while we tend to dream throughout the night, the dreams that happen in REM sleep tend to be the ones that we remember. They're uh, emotionally charged, action-oriented, so on and so forth. So nature uh, or God or the universe and its infinite wisdom designed us that we will not act out those dreams. Our body will actually paralyze itself to prevent us from acting out those dreams. Because I, I always kind of go back to um, primitive man, right? Imagine if uh, our evolutionary ancestor from 40,000 years ago was uh, sleeping on top of a cave somewhere, or on top of a mountain somewhere, I should say, and he had a dream and acted it out. Guess what would happen? He would fall down the mountain and, and die um so that 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 process is still is still in us so what happens is in, in normal REM sleep we spend about 20 percent of our night 20 to 25 percent of our night in REM sleep and that's spaced out over the course of the night so what happens in the first hour or two of sleep we have a little bit of REM sleep and then as the night goes along the periods of REM get longer and longer you may have heard people say we have 90 minute sleep cycles what that means is that every 90 minutes, our brain kind of cycles through the stages of non-REM and then ends up with a period of REM. You can see the very creative naming here, non-REM and REM. <laughs> um, so that's kind of where that, where that comes from. So anyway, every 90 minutes or so, you're going into this period of REM. Normally, obviously, there's variations. And what happens is the body becomes paralyzed as we have these dreams, these, these emotionally charged uh, action-packed, whatever, dreams. Okay. So what's happening is <clears throat> the body's normally paralyzed. You're in this dream state. What can happen in certain conditions, one would be sleep apnea, another would be narcolepsy, a third would just be, um, let's say, disrupted sleep or poor quality sleep of its own accord, uh, and then fourth would be, it just happens. Um, what occurs is people will wake up abruptly out of REM sleep. Okay, so in sleep apnea, that makes sense. The airway closes off, right? The body kind of responds and, and tells the person to wake up. So they may wake up out of REM sleep. In narcolepsy, what's happening is the, the whole idea of being awake and being asleep is very, uh, very fluid. So kind of what we think of it is like the um, sleep is intruding on wakefulness, right? So these people are tired throughout the daytime. And then wakefulness intrudes onto sleep. So these people wake up frequently and have trouble staying asleep. So, uh, so with narcolepsy, what's happening is this, um, this, this difficulty with maintaining sleep stability results in them coming in and out of REM sleep, which 
you'll see in a second, can, can uh, lead to sleep paralysis. And then if somebody has just disrupted sleep from any cause, you know, let's say they have chronic pain or so, and they wake up out of REM sleep, they can have this condition. So what happens is they wake up out of REM sleep, and like I said, sometimes there is dream imagery involved. So people may be having a dream of whatever, and they may actually see that or hear that or whatever is going on. So their brain is kind of partially awake, but their body is still in REM sleep. What does that mean? They're paralyzed. So these people wake up abruptly. They may have dream imagery or hear like someone calling their name or, or worse yet have some sort of uh, a monster or something coming at them and they can't move. Um, and that's, that's essentially what it is. So like I said, people with narcolepsy have this often. People with sleep apnea can have this often. And in fact, there's what's, what's pretty crazy about this, there's some, some evidence in the medical literature to suggest that people who have reported being abducted by aliens actually were having sleep paralysis because what would happen? They're having this frightening uh, situation. They're paralyzed so they can't move, right? And they're this whole idea of uh, is it a dream? Is it a reality? That whole thing kind of blended into into their uh, into their uh, consciousness. So um, you know, who knows if that's true or not? But but it is something interesting to think about. Yeah. So sleep paralysis, like I said, it, of its own accord, it's a benign thing. It's not going to hurt somebody, but it could be signaling that there's something else going on. So what I would tell a patient who's having sleep paralysis, I'd want them to come in for a sleep test and figure out, you know, see if there's something that's missing, either sleep apnea, narcolepsy what have you, or just poor, poor quality sleep. So, um, yeah, so hopefully, uh, you have an experience sleep paralysis. If you have, leave a comment in the, in the section below. If you want to, uh, ask a question, I will certainly answer it. Um, and please like this video, please subscribe to the channel. If you like this video, please share it with your friends and family. And, uh, yeah. And I hope you guys don't, don't, uh, don't experience sleep paralysis too often. Like I said, I've had it myself. So, um, all right. Well, thanks for watching. See you guys in the next video. Take care.